What's going on guys? Jacob Borth back here. Another video of Jacob's Life Vegas. Can you guys say with the content I told you I was going to have a little while ago, getting in contact with the Southern Nevada Water Authority, and today we have a guest on the channel. This is Bronson Mack, you guys. So How's it going? He has been with the Southern Nevada Water Authority, the Las Vegas Valley Water District, for about 17 years now. So he is the go-to person that we're having on the channel today to ask or actually answer some of the questions you guys ask. So we got a uh, list of questions here that you guys put together. I'm going to ask him and he's going to shed some light on water situation here in Southern Nevada. So uh, let's begin here. We got about 10 or so questions, guys, we're going to go through. So where does Southern Nevada get its water? Well, Southern Nevada gets its water primarily from the Colorado River. About 90% of our water supply comes from that river and we pull it directly out of Lake Mead. The remaining 10% of our water supply comes from the groundwater system located directly beneath our feet. We pump that groundwater during the summertime to supplement our Colorado River supplies out of Lake Mead. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, another question we had here. <laughs> Will Las Vegas run out of water? You know, I think that's a great question, and I think it's a question that we all need to be attuned to. You know, water in the desert is a scarce resource, and believe it or not, we live in the middle of the Mojave, right? Right. So <laughs> we need to use that water as wisely as possible. But to the point, will Las Vegas run out of water? The answer to that is no. And here's why. We have a 50-year water resource plan. We know where our water supply is going to come from uh, over the next half century, and we take a look at what projected water demands are expected to be during that time period. And then we make sure that we've got enough water to meet those water demands over that 50 year planning horizon. Now, the Colorado River, it is a limited resource. We only get 300,000 acre feet out of that river every single year. We're using about 245,000 of that 300,000. So we still have some headroom there, but should we exceed or come up to the uh, maximum in the, in the water use that we can take from the Colorado River, we would need to develop new supplies. And that's where we're looking at unused groundwater within the state of Nevada, or perhaps desalination. Okay, cool. Now, when it comes to the Colorado River, this is the next question we have. Who uses the most water in terms of which states and which industries? So the Colorado River is shared by seven different states. It's Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, California and Arizona, and then we can't forget the country of Mexico too. So the seven states in the country of Mexico all share in the water. The largest apportionment of the Colorado River goes to California. <laughs> California gets 4.4 million acre feet. And one of the reasons for that is you have to keep in mind that when the Colorado River was divided up in the 1920s, it was divided up based on agriculture. Las Vegas, Nevada, didn't have any agriculture going on. California did, yes. and so did Arizona. <laughs> So Arizona gets about two and a half million acre feet. California gets 4.4 million acre feet. Nevada gets 300,000. We get the smallest slice of the Colorado River pie. Uh -huh. Now, as far as the industry that uses the most Colorado River water, well, that would be the agricultural industry. That industry that is responsible for growing those winter fruits and vegetables that we all enjoy. When you can go into a grocery store here in Southern Nevada and you can get strawberries in winter yeah. or lettuce <laughs> in winter, that is because that agriculture and that produce was grown in Southern California. That is the largest water user on the Colorado River. It ends up being about 75% of all of the water on the Colorado River goes to agriculture, but it's a critical part of our food network and our food supply. And so it's a, it's a key component of uh, our, uh, our economy. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's one, so people question, recycled water. So does Southern Nevada recycle water? And then have you considered piping treated wastewater to Lake Mead to reduce evaporation? So it's recycled water, tell so us. So recycled water. Now, the one interesting thing about Las Vegas that really is different from a lot of other communities out there is that we have 100% community-wide water reuse. So everybody in Las Vegas that uses water inside their home, all of that water used indoors gets reclaimed, treated to near drinking water standards, and we send it back out to Lake Mead. For every gallon we put out in Lake Mead of treated wastewater, we can take another gallon out and bring it into the valley as drinking water. That lets us stretch our Colorado River supplies. So as a community, we recycle nearly 100% of all the water we use indoors. It's that water that we use outdoors that we only get to use once. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as piping that water, that treated wastewater out to Lake Mead, yes, there was indeed a project to pipe uh, treated wastewater back out to Lake Mead. Uh, that project was canceled due to a number of different reasons and there were a number of different agencies that were involved. 
But the key thing to know here is that water already makes its way out to Lake Mead, and it does so through the Las Vegas wash. And the Las Vegas wash is a, is a wetlands. Uh, they supports a lot of different habitat for wildlife. There's a lot of recreation opportunities out there at the Las Vegas wash too. There's trails, there's biking, there's horseback riding where you can take your horses out there. So the Las Vegas wash is a key conduit in moving water from our watershed out to Lake Mead, whether that's storm water or treated wastewater that gets, gets discharged into the wash. It provides habitat for wildlife, it provides recreation opportunities, but it is a key component in how we recycle all of our indoor water use in Southern Nevada. Okay, cool. So next question, you actually touched on this briefly earlier, talking about desalination. That's a big one, because obviously, right, we're not that far from the ocean. Right. California's even closer to the ocean than we are. Yep. So this is a question, uh, another one that came from the channel, I, or came from that video. Uh, any plans for ocean desalination? What about piping desalination water into Death Valley where it can be used by all desert states? Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. As far as desalinated water goes, while we are close to the coastline, we don't have any coastline here, do we? <laughs> so that would mean that if we were going to participate in desalination, we have two options. We can either pipe and pump that water from the coast to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We're talking about considerable infrastructure to do that. We're right. talking about a lot of power consumption as well. I mean, we've right. all driven over the, El Cajon, the Cajon Pass. Uh, we would have to lift that water up over that pass in order to bring it into the valley. So a lot of infrastructure that would be required there. The other option that we could have would be some kind of an exchange where we would build a desal plant either in California or in maybe even the country of Mexico. And in exchange for that investment in building that desal plant, that state or that country would give us a like amount of water from their Colorado River resources. Mm -hmm. We would then be able just to access that water from Lake Mead through our existing infrastructure instead of having to construct new infrastructure to move that water from the coast to Las Vegas. Now the question about desalinated water in Death Valley, I've heard that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a uh, uh, sort of a scenario whereby desalinated water literally get pumps and discharged into the Death Valley area, almost creating a, kind of a lake or a saltwater type right. uh, uh, lake system there. A um, Couple things I think would be extremely challenging. One, environmental regulations associated with doing something like that. Also, Death Valley is a national park, so uh, the federal government manages that for right. recreational purposes. Uh, it is a, a pretty unique area to, uh, to the desert southwest. I don't foresee uh, getting a whole lot of support for being able to flood Death Valley, and, uh, and, and really I don't see it providing much benefit to us here in southern Nevada. As it is right now, people who tour Death Valley, a lot of times they come through Las Vegas, so we're picking up a little bit of that tourism uh, of Death Valley in our local economy. Okay, cool. So here's another one that someone else had asked uh, about Nye County, right? Still southern part of Nevada. You know, are there any plans to develop water resources in Nye County? You know, so Nye County is home of Pahrump, Nevada, yes. over the hump in Pahrump. Uh, Nye County is solely sourced by groundwater, so all of the groundwater, or all of the water, I should say, that is used in Pahrump is pumped from the ground. Uh, they have had some challenges there with uh, a drop in the aquifer, uh, some over-appropriation of the basins that are there. Southern Nevada Water Authority does not have any water rights within Knight County, nor do we have any anticipation of acquiring any water rights in Knight County. Right. Where we have water rights uh, for unused water is in East Central Nevada, in uh, White Pine County and Lincoln County. And that is a project that we are looking at as a safety net for our community. Uh, it would be a source of water independent of the Colorado River. And we're moving through that process to get that project permitted so that if and when it's needed, we can construct it. Okay, cool. Now here's a question that is on a lot of people's mind. I'm sure a lot of people have a certain answer they would love to hear for this one. Can we deny California access to our water in Lake Mead? Deny California access to our water in Lake Mead. I think we need to unpack that one a little bit too. Uh -huh. So let's keep in mind that Lake Mead, yeah, it's in our backyard. And yeah, right. we get the benefit of all the recreation activity that happens there. But the water that's in Lake Mead is a shared resource. It's not all, all ours. Uh, in fact, the largest share of it is earmarked for, color, for California. So to say, could we cut off California? The answer to that is no. California has a legal <laughs> entitlement to the water that is in the Colorado River, just like Nevada has a legal entitlement to the water that is in the Colorado River, but only specific quantities every single year. 
Right. So, sorry guys. <laughs> hey, we love California. Dave, keep in mind that the water that goes into California is used, a lot of it is used in the agricultural industry. And again, that's where those winter fruits and vegetables that are stocking our grocery stores here in Las Vegas come from. So, we do benefit from, uh, from the water that gets used in Southern California. Okay. So, this one, also you touched on it earlier, but we'll go through this question. Uh, does Southern Nevada have a backup water supply other than Lake Mead, the Colorado River? Is there a contingency plan if Lake Mead's levels get too low? So again, 90% of our water supply comes from Lake Mead. We have seen declines in Lake Mead due to drought, which has reduced the snowpack in the Colorado Rockies, which in turn has reduced the amount of runoff that has reached the Colorado River. That has reduced the flows of the Colorado River. That has reduced the amount of water that is in Lake Mead and in Lake Powell. Now, that said, Lake Powell and Lake Mead are doing what they were intended to do, store water in the wet years so that it is available for us in the dry years. We've just had a lot of dry years and we need some more wet years. Currently, right. the snowpack looks pretty good. So we think we're gonna have a, a nice runoff this year. We're gonna see some good flows in that river system. Now, that said, as a community, it's important that we continue to stay focused on water conservation and can continue to drive down our water use as a community uh, collectively so that we can manage our water resources in the limited amount that we get from the Colorado River. Okay. Is Las Vegas sustainable? Is Las Vegas sustainable? Well, we are actually in a pumping station that is here at the Springs Preserve, and the Springs Preserve is really dedicated to sustainable desert living. Is Las Vegas sustainable? Absolutely it is. Uh, this is a community of 2.2 million people. Right. Uh, this is 70% of our state's population is right here in this valley. Our community is responsible for about 70% of our state's economic activity, and we do all of that using only 5% of all of the water that is available within the state of Nevada. So we use a very small amount of water in right. Southern Nevada. We generate a lot of economic activity and job growth because of that. Mm -hmm. um, so Las Vegas will continue to be sustainable as long as each and every one of us does our part to conserve water. And the best way that we can do that is to reduce the amount of water we use outside. Again, all of that indoor water gets reclaimed, treated to near drinking water standards. We return it back to Lake Mead. We get to recycle it, reuse it. It's that outdoor water we only get to use once. That's why we have codes on development that restrict the amount of turf grass that can be installed in new homes. We have a program to replace grass with water smart landscaping, and we'll give you $3 for every square foot of grass you remove and replace. All of those efforts are all intended to make our community more sustainable, but it's up to us, each and every Southern Nevadan, to take the action and be conservation minded. Well, cool. Well, uh, we got a lot covered. And we did, and I realized yeah. I didn't answer one of the questions. One of the questions was, does Las Vegas have a backup water supply? In oh, yeah. our 50-year water resource plan, yes. Again, primarily we're using Colorado River water, but we do have that groundwater within the state of Nevada, that unused water that we have water rights to and we're working to get permitted. Uh, the additional, uh, additional water supplies could come from desalination. That could be a critical piece of our water resource picture going, going forward, but it's gonna be when we need it. And right yeah. now we're in good shape. We still have a lot of water that we can conserve in this valley. When you consider that mm -hmm. as you drive down the street, we still see grass in the medians. We still see grass on our streetscapes. That is grass that nobody walks on, nobody uses. All that grass does is does this. Just drinks our water all day long, <laughs> right? So that's the kind of grass that we can get rid of and that will make us more water efficient and, uh, and allow us to be more sustainable and stave off having to bring on any backup water supplies. Yeah, exactly, so yeah, so we're not just gonna run out of water tomorrow and we're all just gonna be in a drought. We got a, we got a little bit of a plan for it. We have, we have a very <laughs> solid plan. And again, when you think about the economic activity, our community is responsible for providing for the state. Uh, ensuring a reliable water supply is key to that. And that's a responsibility we take very, very seriously. Southern Nevada's water resources are secure. Just keep conserving. Mm -hmm. So guys, Coming to you from the pumping station here at the Springs Preserves. Thank you to Bronson for coming on and doing this video. I know you guys had lots of questions about the sustainability of Las Vegas, especially those of you who live here and are getting ready to live here in the future. I know it's a big concern for a lot of you. So I want to get someone on here who can help you with all that kind of stuff. So thanks again, Bronson, for answering all these questions. Thanks for watching, guys. Tell me what you think about all of this stuff down below. That's it for this video. I'm Jacob. This is my life in Vegas.